Hey everyone, Big Paulie back for a cinema trip. I know, it's been about a week since I've been. <laughs> uh, right, today um, is going to be a 50-50 film. Because uh, many people have reviewed this film and considered it to be a big pile of shit. And one of the worst movies ever put on celluloid. Yes. Right, okay. <laughs> that doesn't give me much hope. Um, it stars Taron Egerton, Jamie Foxx and Ben Men Mendelsohn from um, Rogue One. It's Robin Hood. But it's a very modern take on Robin Hood. So you've got to, I think you've got to go into this putting aside any kind of historical accuracy just this is a, a modern day action adventure film based on the characters just the characters names forget about what he did who he was it's a complete new modern taking of the film i hope because it's going to be a bit weird i think it's going to be a bit weird you know, i've been i've heard references that this film is so modern that <laughs> they're almost walking around with iPhones. <laughs> That's how modern the take is on it. So we shall see. So um, I've still got a little while before I get in there, into Cineworld here in Dover. Half an hour. So I might pop into... Where should we pop? Uh, well, there's only one... Really, there's only one place to pop. That's to the entertainer. We've got a travel lodge... Well, I'm, just, I'm not staying there. Nando's, I've eaten. Next, I don't fancy wearing any women's clothing. Uh, shoe zone, I've already got shoes. <laughs> Poundland, no, it's pointless. There's no Blu-rays in Poundland. So the entertainer is really it. Okay, I've got a drink. A lovely Diet Coke. I'm just looking at a van that parked... It looks like it. I'll show you in a minute, but it looks like it's got a Cartman in from South Park in the windscreen. It could just be a visual interpretation of what it might look like or what I see. Anyway, I'll have a look in a minute. Oh, God, blimey, what's going on? Oh, look at that lovely castle. I was meaning to take you around the castle, wasn't I, this summer, but... One thing led to another and we didn't get chance. It's all cold and shitty yet now. But it's nice, it's blue sky, so I will take you around Dover Castle, but it might don't know if it's gonna be the end of this year now, it'll probably be early next year. But I've also got some MMs as well, some peanut MMs. Yes, I know I'm on Weight Watchers, get over it. <laughs> but I'm entitled to a little snack every now and again. Right, okay, so let's pop into the entertainer quickly. Still got half an hour. Um, he really does look like Cartman. Hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll see you in the entertainer in a minute. Oh, hello, Dover Castle. Oh, we were so looking forward to going around you. But uh, you're going to have to wait a little while. All right, where's that fan? There it is. Look at that. You see that? And the lower... It is Cartman, isn't it? Oh, get out of the way, woman. It is Cartman. You can see his red jumper, his blue hat, and his yellow pom-pom. That's definitely Cartman. I might go and have a look in a minute. All right, let's get into the entertainer.
he's got dirty boots. Oh yes, here we go. Please don't be a piece of shit. later I'll boil you in your own piss <laughs> we are not amused <laughs> yeah that's just one part of the dialogue in Robin Hood um, where do I begin right okay as I thought ignore what you know about Robin Hood. There's no green tights here. There's no forest. There's no fat ball bloke with a robe on. This is a completely different take on Robin Hood. You wouldn't even think it was Robin Hood, to be perfectly honest. Um, and the difference here is that most of the cast wear leather jackets. <laughs> I'm not joking. Leather jackets. What the hell? Okay. Um, it starts off very promising. Robin gets drafted um, into going out and fighting in Arabia. Uh, and there's quite a, an impressive set piece. Kind of Saving Private Ryan-esque set piece. But with bows and arrows instead. Uh, and it lasts for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And that's probably one of the best pe set pieces there is in the whole film there are two or three other good action pieces but the trouble is the rest of the film is really quite boring really quite boring and dull um i mean robin teams up with jamie fox who was an arabian soldier that got caught at the battle at the beginning teams up with him to bring down the sheriff of Nottingham played by Ben Mendelssohn a rather shouty Ben Mendelssohn uh, in fact that's all he does through the film is like shouting and the idea is to basically steal all his money um, and give it to the poor I suppose <laughs> but uh yeah, um, I mean, the cast itself, the cast is good. You've got Taron Egerton. He's a, he's a good actor in the kind of stuff that he does. You know, like Kingsman. Um, I haven't seen Eddie the Eagle, so I can't comment on that, but whether or not he's going to be a good Elton John, we'll have to see next year. Jamie Foxx, he's a good actor. Uh, ben Mendelsohn, I mean, Rogue One, one of the best villains, one of the best Star Wars villains. Marion, I don't know who the hell Marion was, but I couldn't give two tosses. <laughs> uh, basically, what happens is, uh, when Robin comes back, he's presumed dead, he comes back from Arabia after this battle. And Marion's only fucking shacked up with Christian Sodin Grey. <laughs> yes, Christian Grey is in this film. Oh my God. Uh, but he doesn't really have a very big role. It's quite, it's, it's very forgettable. In fact, most of the cast are forgettable in the film. You just don't care about them. That's the thing. There's not any standout roles. There's not any standout acting pieces. From occasional time to time, there'll be 
the witty one-liners, you know, the kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger type one-liners. And they try their best at delivering these one-liners, especially Robin, or Rob, as he's called in the film. But they're just not that funny. They're just not that funny. Set pieces look impressive. They look good. The action pieces. is a kind of a 300 feel to it when it comes to the action, you know, with the slow motion, which has been used time and time again. And there's no need to use it. There's no need to use it. It was best used in 300. <laughs> It'll be like Die Hard using bullet time from Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> it's a signature of a franchise. Don't fucking let anybody else start meddling with it. Uh, because it just doesn't work. Now, the problem is, is I would say it's the script. The script, the direction, and the way that it's executed. Because, as I say, I was bored quite a lot in between these pieces. I wasn't even interested in the dialogue. The dialogue was mainly bad um, and at times I found myself sitting there thinking about new ways to destroy the Fifty Shades of Shit Discs that's how I, how I engrossed I was in the film <laughs> that's not a good sign that's definitely not a good sign the one thing they got wrong in this film well, one of the things they got wrong in this film. The execution of the characters. Now, take for instance James Cameron. Titanic. I know Titanic might not be to everyone's liking. But the way that James Cameron executed Titanic. These characters, you follow these characters through the movie. You care about these characters. When Jack was hanging on to that piece of wood and Rose was a selfish bitch because she wouldn't let him on it. <laughs> you care about this character that he was going to die. And even on this ship, these minor characters that are in the background, the countesses and the counts and all that kind of shit, that have a screen time of maybe 30 seconds or a minute in Titanic when their fate comes at the end of the film you bloody care about them you care about all of these minuscule characters that's the one thing that James Cameron does fantastically he grabs the audience and he never lets go until the end of the film that's one thing that was lacking in this film I couldn't give a shit about any of these characters, to be perfectly honest. If Roman had died in Arabia after the first 10 minutes, I couldn't care less. <laughs> now, that's not a good prospect for a two-hour film. Oh dear, the music was good, though. I must admit the music was good. It's just everything else wasn't. <laughs> Oh, at least I didn't have to pay for the film, though. That's a good thing, because I use my Cineworld Unlimited card, so I only pay once a month and go and see as many films. i tell you what, though, there was about four people in there, but nobody left. So nobody got bored and left halfway through the film. So it kept its audience retention. Whether or not it was anything to do with let's find out where the story's going, or... For all I know, they might have all been asleep. I don't know. <laughs> I was verging on falling asleep, actually. It was nice and warm and cosy in there. Yes, so... Oh, dear. Okay. Yes, so it's not the actors' fault. The actors were good. These actors are good. It's just the material that they've been given, the dialogue that they've been given, the direction, the whole script, didn't work. Didn't work at all. And as for the Sheriff of Nottingham, Ben Mendelsohn, I like Ben Mendelsohn. He's a good actor. He might have like a one course pony, one action pony or whatever you call it, a one, po a one trick pony. He might be a one trick pony, you know, miserable <laughs> and shouting most of the time. But at least in Rogue One, he was an interesting character. Here he's just 
someone shouted off and, and that's about it Kevin Costner's Robin Hood Alan Rickman the kind of dialogue that Alan Rickman had cancel Christmas that is that works that works uh, Alan Rickman was great in that film Ben Mendelsohn's not really great in this film no yes yeah, so uh, it's not a film I'm probably going to be buying when it comes out like I say if you are bored in a film you lose interest you don't care about the characters I don't want to buy it to put it in my collection because I'm never going to watch it again probably maybe if it ends up on ITV 10 o'clock at night but then again with the adverts I fall asleep as well so yes it's not it's not good prospect so yes I went into it with high hopes the first 10 minutes 10 15 minutes I thought yeah this is getting this is going to be good you know with this if this carries on with this momentum at this this Arabian battle then we're in for some good stuff but nah it just doesn't work yes so that's my review of Robin Hood. Um, <laughs> if anybody's seen Chris Stuckman's review, he gave it an F. <laughs> he tore the shit out of it. Um, out of ten, I'm going to give it three. Yeah, three out of ten. So, it's not good. It's not a good film. Poor old Taron Edgerton. He's, he's had a pretty good, solid line of movies up until now. But you get a flop in your career. Hopefully he doesn't get another one. But uh, yes, that's my review of Robin Hood. Stealing from the rich to give to the poor. Someone stole two hours from me. And flushed it down the shitter. Yes. Right, okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed my review of Robin Hood. <laughs> oh dearie me. I hope you enjoyed my review of Robin Hood. Um, stick down in the comments if you've seen it. What you thought of it. If you're planning on seeing it. And what your best Robin Hood is. I mean, is it Russell Crowe? You know, is it the Russell Crowe movie? The Kevin Costner? Is it the 1938? Is it Errol Flynn? Uh, which I've never seen, but apparently is the best Robin Hood movie of all time. Um, yeah, stick it down in the comments. Like the video by giving it a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Bye everyone.